All right, awesome. We should be recording now. So, uh, so Maureen, thank you. This is a great idea, actually, to uh, for us just to start to talk a little bit uh, about the yoga, about the postures, uh, almost at the same way we would have conversations at the studios. So prepped with your book, good. Because <laughs> I think one of the things too, once we get into um, uh, the postures, is really pulling out the lines that sometimes too are the most confusing for people. Uh, yeah. Really talking about those lines. Uh, but I thought, you know, I, I would start here, and I'm going to switch over my uh, my background here, talking about the elephant in the room. Actually, oh. that, that's really just a video conference joke. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I thought we would talk about is uh, we say, or people here say that Bikram yoga, so the yoga is a prescription and there's all kinds of different yogas. And we know we have people come to the studio and they've never done Bikram. They've done other types of yoga. Sometimes even in class, they'll do other poses or not understand. But really, the thing that I know has drawn me to Bikram Yoga, and I think the same for you, is the fact that it is a prescription. It's a very prescribed set of, of postures and breathing exercises in a certain order for a very specific way. And it's following that prescription. And we, I know we said this a lot at training, and we say it now, it's to trust the process. Uh, so I just wanted to get your thoughts sort of on that because I'm sure you hear it, I hear it too. It's just people, I mean, it, there's so much more than just 26 postures put together, you know, in just a certain order. Yeah, when I, when I, my, I'm just going to share what I, my reaction to it is that it's that structure um, where people feel a sense of kind of, security they they know what's going to happen mm -hmm. and there's a level of predictability that i think it can be criticized as oh it's the same thing over and over and you know i i'm sure a lot of people have heard from other people you know the people at our studio hear from other people like don't you get bored it's the same thing over and over again um that that prescription is set up in a certain way and it's the same every time, and that repetition is a real big part of it. But to me, I think structure and order that someone can enter into um, to then do some real work. Mm -hmm. They don't have to think about the things out not prescribed. Right. It's given, and you can enter into that sort of organization so that you can kind of um, focus on yourself right and specific for specific reasons or whatever but that's just my response to that sort of prescription and i always say in class i i read something once about people are more pe people there's been studies done that show that people don't follow prescriptions very well <laughs> uh, and and they're actually better about giving their dogs their prescription mm -hmm. and, and doing it properly than they are to themselves, which I just think is a funny, I, maybe it isn't funny, maybe it's sad, but uh, it, it's, I always think of that when we say this prescription for good health and right. you know, follow, follow it precisely and carefully for the most benefit. Yeah, yeah. Well, well what, you know, one of the things that I really love about the yoga and learn so much more during training is that each of the postures are really built for the next posture to prepare you. And so I think as we go into the postures, and I think as we have other teachers join too, um, I think that it's really amazing how this, this yoga really is for everyone, right? From beginner through advanced. And from, so from the physical side of it, why it's so important to be 90 minutes, why it's so important to warm up for that almost hour before you really start the actual floor series, right? The yoga on the floor. Um, why, and, and like what you're saying too, why it's important to quiet your mind and, 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 to, and to be able to sort of go on to autopilot because you're, it's our mind, their body, right? And why that's so important. And so how that really, hopefully by the time we're done two people will see it really is a, it really is a prescription, but I agree with you, right? People <laughs> follow prescriptions and that's always the sort of the push and the pull, right? Of this whole thing and, and people going and and taking that time for themselves, the 90 minutes, so. But, but it is that tension, that push and pull, 
that is life. That's the ba that's the balance, right? It's yeah. the it's the pendulating back and forth and trying to follow along, but constantly failing. It's it's you know it's it's dialectical, dialogical. It's like this building and constructing. Um, and I just love the slowing down piece, the accessibility to all people and all bodies. You know, you can come in and just start with pranayama, you know, interlocking your fingers, like literally one right. step at a time. And that's challenging in its own right. Mm -hmm. um, but then to build over time, we've seen it in our students of that. Basically they're, they're building themselves up with this, with this attempt to do all of these things exactly the right way. And, and they feel that sense of accomplishment at the end of the yeah. class and walk out the door in that yoga high and and then you know a month of practice or three months six months and it's like you still get that feeling that i i don't think we articulate it very much uh, it, we don't need to it's just it's that's such that's vitality right there um which i think is so cool yeah yeah, yeah. i love to watch that process with people i love to watch that unfold so why why the 90 minutes and why do we do the postures in a specific order and you know the the pre warm up for the then party time and the and then the standing series I know the standing series is cardiovascular and to get the heart rate going and to get sweating and I I remember somebody at training saying like well the standing series really is it's exercise not yoga the real yoga is on the floor do you want to talk a little bit what you think about that? Sure, and I think I think some of that comes from, and it comes from Bikram, of course, himself too, and and and, and because that is actually part of the the dialogue. We don't often say it, but I think I think in part it comes from the fact that we're doing hatha yoga, and in hatha yoga you pause, uh, as we know, on the floor. You have to pause basically. So you go into the posture, you hold the posture, you release the posture, you hold in stillness all while breathing normal. So all of those are present, this is my interpretation, all of those are present in the standing series, except for we're not pausing between the postures. So we're moving through that series uh, as a warm up. Uh, now you are still breathing normal, right? You're still going into the posture, holding the posture, releasing the posture, all while breathing normal. It's still a critical part of, of the standing series, but we don't pause. And so that's why, I, that's my interpretation that that's why when we hit the floor, it's Hatha, because it is Hatha yoga that we're doing. Uh, but that's where we're now pausing and we, and we introduce dead body pose um, right. in, in between each postures. So, so um, that, that's my interpretation, but have you heard that before or is that, that yours as well? Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought about it in a while and I haven't mm -hmm. talked to anybody about it for a while. Probably last time I talked about it was probably with Terry or something and you mm -hmm. probably talked about it with Diane or whatever. But um, yeah, and I just love that pendulation on the floor of the active posture the rest right. and um, recovery. And my whole thing is like the importance of the parasympathetic nervous system with that nose breathing mm -hmm. and keeping the mouth closed. And I, I think a lot of times new people come in, their perception about, they don't know anything about yoga, what it is. They just say it's a, another workout. I'm going to stretch. Great. Come on, try. But, you know, gasping for air and struggling to breathe i remember when i first started practice that was the biggest challenge is like what i gotta close my mouth like i'm not good at that anyway but like breathe through my nose and i the more i learn about the polyvagal nerve and the reason why we keep the heart rate low for you know stress management i mean that is just so your whole body mind system I feel like the breathing is just huge. So mm -hmm. getting that heart rate elevated in standing series is the challenge, but really working on keeping the breath easy, which I think takes a long time of endurance and breathing that way in practice. Um, it's never mastery, but the only, the only, if, if the goal is mastery, it's just more health for you. The more right. you do it, the better it is for you. Right. Well, as we get into the postures, we can talk probably too about, there's multiple, uh, there's multiple, I think seven, but we'll do a, a count and we'll go through them, different types of breathing once we get in, right? Because we know we start with pranayama, we end with the kapobhati, but we also have 80-20 breathing. We don't talk about it in class, but we can probably talk about that. 
there's mm -hmm. the sit up, the breathing in the sit up. So there's all kinds of different breathings once you get in. And of course, then just breathing in and out through your nose, through the postures that you go in and why those are important. The discipline, which we'll talk about in a little bit too, the whole discipline of what we're doing is such a critical part of the prescription, right? Is really, and that's, that's what people are sort of learning in here. And it begins with pranayama, right? Controlling something that's usually automatic, right? So you it, don't think about breathing, right? Yeah, I think, I think discipline is intentionality, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on doing this deliberately, not unconsciously. Like, right. focusing on, and that, and that is the discipline is to decide to come in and to focus deliberately on one step at a time. So with breathing, right? Yeah, we take it for granted. It just happens. We don't think about it but now we're doing it more deliberately. Right, yeah. And, and part of that, I think, even for new people becomes a challenge because it's something they don't normally think about. And now we're asking them to, like in pranayama and deep standing deep breathing, we're asking them to breathe in for a total of six seconds, hold it, breathe out for six seconds, hold it, right? And that alone starts sort of, I think, a whole struggle with people. So yeah, it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting- We both point. smile when you said struggle, and both of us- <laughs> True Bikram yoga person, right? <laughs> all right, our next question, which we get asked all the time, and here's a picture from class. Why the heat? Why does it have to be so hot? I think these might be a couple of our students while practicing. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little biblical to me. <laughs> so why the heat? Because some, you know, a lot of people, and they don't, I don't like the heat. I mean, I hear this even as I talk about it outside. Obviously, people will come in, they get used, they start to begin to get used to it. But so many people, when you talk and say, "Oh, I, I don't like the heat. I would never be able to do that. I did it. I couldn't take the heat." Yeah. Uh, so yeah, talk I hear about that. the heat a little bit. Yeah, I hear that from everybody, even people at my gym. You know, that, oh, you're a Bikram yoga teacher. I can't do the heat. That's the. That's the and these are, you know, athletic. Right. Yeah. People, and they're like, no way. No, it's this aversion. I, I, well, that's people's perception of what's uncomfortable. You know, some people say, oh, I'd rather be cold than hot, or I'd rather be hotter than cold. It's a preference. I think it's just a perception of, to me, like who you think you are. Like, oh, I'm a person who doesn't do heat, or I'm a person who does heat. Um, I don't know why the heat is, is, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons why it's threatening or I think it's just the thought of it is the discomfort that goes with that. Mm -hmm. But our yogis embrace this, you know, the sweating and where other people be like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to be in a place where I'm going to sweat that profusely from the heat and, and the stress of that. But that is actually, I think, I think the heat is designed to create distress so that we can build distress tolerance. I think you're 100% right, Meow, we, because we are wired for comfort, right? So we seek our whole lives to be comfortable. So we have clothes to protect us from the cold, and when if we get to, you know, so, so, that we, so that we can stay warm. And then if it gets too hot, we have air conditioned buildings and things to keep us so that we don't get too hot. So we're wired to be comfortable. And now we're telling people, go into an environment where you will feel uncomfortable for 90 minutes and do, you know, uh, do postures and breathing and control. Because you, what you can control in there is just you and your body and your breathing, right? So you're right, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting element, different from other forms of yoga, because we're, we're adding in elements, and we'll go through some of those, that are, that are naturally people will sort of repel against. So, and the heat is one of them, and it, it's a challenge, but it's actually part of what makes it Bikram yoga as well. Right, the, I think the challenge is the thing. Yeah, it, and then of it, course, always at the base is, it's a beginner yoga, safety is the biggest part, I think, of this yoga, right? And when your muscles are heated, you're just gonna be less prone to injury. Mm -hmm. uh, so sports injuries, of course, are, are, are big on the spectrum of just injuries in general, big yoga injury, uh, yoga injuries are definitely out there and definitely present. It's just another added piece to help you be safe while you're doing this, this uh, yoga. 
yeah physically phys physically right. I think is going to warm up the muscles and like Vikram says you know you can't bend steel unless you heat it up first mm -hmm. so there's there's that element the heat shock proteins are shown to be like amazingly good on a cellular level yeah. there's this big fad of people w doing post workouts and saunas to get that same get those same benefits yeah so another benefit of the heat because um, it's amazing what the body does both in extreme cold and extreme heat the how it actually it, it, what, what it does to preserve itself right so again we're wired for comfort and so but when you go into that comfort stage that's not natural to your body your body you know for evolutionary we're used to having to you, you know to, we, we are cold we are hot we do experience these streams and your body res responds to it but into every world day today, your body never has to because you're always in an environment you're controlling uh, to make yourself comfortable. So, right. yeah. Yeah, I would say that, I, I don't know how much we're wired to be comfortable. We're also wired to actually be a little bit distressed to get to get to grow there's well, always true i guess i say we, we wired to seek comfort but yeah, yeah. but yeah and, yeah and i was gonna say our culture sends us yes. messages everywhere that right. reinforces that so yeah. we yeah. we think we're supposed to be comfortable because that's what everything in the environment tells us right young age which is frightening which is why it's so hard to sell our yoga it's like come <laughs> on in Come on and do something completely the opposite of everything that you're accustomed to. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Next question. Yeah. Why the mirrors? I get to ask that a, a lot of times. And people say I could never even practice in front of a mirror. And you know what? It's really, it's interesting to me because I've also talked to people. They don't even like to look in the mirror on just, you know, outside of yoga. They just don't, you know, they, they, they're, they're so, it, so the, the mirror piece is a huge piece too. There's always a physical aspect in Bikram yoga, right? Like this is what we do. Like we'll talk about that. But there's also always sort of a social, psychological aspect of why it's important to have that mirror in front of you. So yeah. talk a little bit about the mirror and your experience in the mirrors, because that's different. Not a lot of yogas don't use mirrors at all, right? I mean, I don't even know. Most don't probably don't. Right. So. First chapter of my book, that's what I, I ask in the intro, why the mirrors, why the heat, right? And it is psychological, obviously. It's, well, the self-realization piece. Mm -hmm. It's too, it's, it's too, there's too much to go into all of it, but yeah. um, I, I want to kind of put it back on you and say, well, what do you think? Why, why, I, I will talk about, again, other people's perception of Bikram yoga as people go in a hot room and they look in a mirror and aren't, isn't that so narcissistic? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of gross. Like, oh, a bunch of people like staring at themselves in the mirror. Those are the comfortable people who like to come in and just look at themselves. And to a degree, I'm sure there's some of that because there's human beings in the room, right? right? And even on any given day you, or within the practice, you might have that interaction with the mirror it's all okay it is what it is but but there's more too i think the people who or the parts of me or a person who struggles to look in the mirror fear of what you might see who am i looking at i mean brings up existential questions like who am i what who am i looking at who is that person looking back at me is it you can hyper focus on your flaws your body I, I used to look at my stomach for like years and and then just wondered why why do i keep going there what what's happening it's how you relate to yourself i'm a body but i'm thinking i'm having a conversation with myself um it's getting to know who's who is that entity looking back at me right so that's a that's a scary journey because that's a path um but I, then there's just the simple alignment you know finding one single point of focus where are you where are you gonna look are you gonna look in your eyes are you gonna look are you gonna avoid looking at yourself like what it's just sort of what's happening in the moment and noticing that mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you what's your take on it what do you think well i think that um 
I think for for the mirrors, I think it's obviously it's the physical and the, the biggest thing that, you know, when I started doing, the, I've done other types of yoga, but when I started, I just started with a hot yoga that was Bikram style. The teacher was actually Bikram trained. So we had mirrors there. So I thought it sort of thought it was normal until I started to do, you know, when I wasn't in a Bikram era, Bikram studio, studio doing other types of yoga. So I think on that, um, I thought it was normal. And then I realized it wasn't normal. <laughs> So, but for me, I always first took it as, oh, you have to see your alignment, right? But then I realized that, that I, I sort of took for granted that you as your best teacher, right? Looking at yourself, looking at your alignment, that's, you know, a big part of it. You as your best teacher. Right. And so, um, again, so there, there's a piece there. And then uh, obviously from training and then going into the little bit, the deeper of, you really seeing yourself and seeing yourself suffering and then having compassion for yourself, which is a little bit deeper concept on it, but uh, you, because there is suffering, obviously, <laughs> when you go to yoga and seeing yourself suffer and then having compassion, and Terry talks about this a lot, having compassion for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then because you have to have compassion for yourself before you real, have real compassion and that overflows and you can have it for other people. And so for me, the mirrors, it's obviously the, the, just for the alignment, but also then also, again, a lot of it too, for um, uh, just learning to really look at myself, accept myself. Uh, it's and, and every in every class, just like your body is different, your mind is different and your perception of yourself is different and your acceptance is different. But I, I, I've come to believe that it's just actually a, a really core critical part of the yoga. Yeah, I think so. Um... I, yeah, I was going to add to what you said about, um, it's a visceral experience too. It's a, an embodied experience of, it's not just in your mind and you're sizing yourself up or thinking about your reflection and thinking about what you're seeing. It's, it's, you're no, you're confronted that you're embodied too. Cause I think we live, we live in our minds a lot. Um, and you know, we think a lot and that's part of our stuff. That's a, that's part of our suffering. And then is the physical challenge, which is another, you know, more suffering in there. But that compassion piece, I was smiling because at training, I mean, that was my lesson. And, and I think it's been my lesson, self-compassion my mm -hmm. whole life. I had to get beat over the head with it. And I remember laying on my mat, maybe week seven or something, and one of the teachers who came for research turned around during class and said to me, if you can't have compassion for yourself, how the hell are you going to do that for other people? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Whoa! you know, and, and I, and I, and I was bawling my eyes out and struggling and falling apart. Like you have to have that felt right. emotional bodily ground, ex real experience to I think really learn something. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's another piece of why I love our yoga because yeah. it's physically, psychologically, it's hard, but those, those real challenges are real and, but they also elicit real change and courage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, it's, it's interesting. And I've talked to people about looking in the mirror when I did that workshop and you know, their conversations with themselves about themselves is mm -hmm. everything you know we shared that day you know uh, well that whole we can go right into the hindu the big self little self what are you seeing but that's pretty esoteric and yeah yeah but that but it, but you know the other part too is that how often unless you're someone that does like film and stuff like that like veronica lake that's who i have here you know who robert or jessica rabbit was based off of but <laughs> but um you, where you see yourself somewhere right how often in life do you really spend 90 minutes actually looking at yourself really not at all right so it's it i think that some people sometimes downplay it but there's a, something about observing yourself for 90 minutes in a challenging environment. And people just sometimes can do it and sometimes they just can't do it. And that's the whole part, I think, that again makes it more than just doing some postures in a hot room, right? It's, it's more than that. What I love is that you don't even have to know this 
Like we're, we're right. talking about it explicitly. Yeah. It's happening when right. you come into practice. You don't have to know it. You don't have to talk about it. It's working on you. It's, it's becoming a part of you. And, and that's why, like it does, the magic does it on you. The practice will do it for you. And that's what I never understood about what Bikram would say. Like, yeah, just come in and do the yoga. And Jason says it all the time. You don't need to explain it. Just yeah. come, keep coming, keep coming. Because it does just become a part of you. Yeah. In a good, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. All right, next one. And this one's more physical. <laughs> Why the carpet? <laughs> well, you prepared pictures. I love it. <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate it. So this, this baby is my home growing up. I don't know. See, there's my mother sitting. <laughs> so yours probably too. She's a young mom. <laughs> uh, why the carpet? People always ask that too. It's like, well, and, and not all Bikram Yoga Studios, of course, have carpet. Of course, we do. We're traditionalists. But why the carpet? I mean, there's, I mean, I always think it's really, for, first and foremost, safety. I mean, mm -hmm. It's about people, it, it, accessible to all people. People come in, you, we don't want them to slip, uh, you know, and, and, this, and if you do it on a wood floor, it's so difficult. And if you turn on your mat, unless you have all the mirrors everywhere, it's hard to see yourself. Yeah. So uh, is there anything beyond that or is it just? <laughs> I, do, I was gonna say, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know what the deal with the carpet is. I'm thinking, is it, is it a Bengali thing? Is it, it could be like an Indian thing that it's just warmer and more welcoming and you take yeah. your shoes off. I, I have no idea. I, th I think it's mainly, when people ask, it's just pure safety. It's so that you're less likely to slip and have an injury on carpet than you are on wood floor or other types of flooring. Let's talk about slipping for a second. Yeah, yeah, that is good since we're on here right <laughs> like i but I, you know i i have to move my feet this way and triangle because i'm slipping i'm slipping i'm slipping how do we why do we encourage people not to stand on their mats and not to kind of get a good grip on the floor what mm -hmm. if, yeah you, well build it it's building the building up the strength right because it is so what do we say? We say, don't uh, change the yoga for your body, right? Let that you know, change your body for the yoga. So don't wear things that are going to make you grip, you know, harder or, uh, you know, change sort of that way. Let you, you want to have, you, you want to have the yoga change your body. You want to become stronger by doing it the right way. Uh, and so it, whether it's building up strength in your legs um you know all those different types of things you know to really sort of uh to, to to have that change happen people want to look a certain way in a posture right so they'll use they want to use things to look a certain way even though that's not really the objective here but what 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 your thoughts on that well so what is the objective here well, the objective, I mean, so let's talk about triangles. So rather than looking a oh. certain way, mm -hmm. right? Like looking around, like I'm supposed to look like this. That means I'm doing the pose right. What is, what is the objective if it's not that? Well, it, if it's like, let's say triangle. So opening up your hips. So let's, you know, you'd have to take the, uh, to me, you'd have to, uh, to me, I'd have to take the posture and see what the object, some of the objectives in there, a chest opener, a hip opener. Right. Um, and so how do you begin to do that without, again, using some, uh, something to grip better, right? So you can, you feel like you can go deeper. Um, so that that's what, yeah, that's, what's different from other yoga. Mm -hmm. and, and I've talked to other yoga style teachers who are like, why don't you use props? You know, because props are a big part of those kind of yoga right. series and styles. You use the props to get deeper into a posture or whatever. We don't do that because I, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think part of it is that it's psychological. It's, it's realizing the, your limitations physically mm -hmm. and accepting those limitations and then working with them. And if you think about that in a broader sense, it's hard to accept your limitations. It's, re it's better to just pretend we don't have them or kind of want to get beyond them or, or kind of not accept them, but accepting the, that the limits of your body, which is different every day, 
right? Mm -hmm. And just to notice, you know, what's happening. My hips are tight and that's okay. I, and don't get upset that I don't look like everyone else. Right. You know, I can't, you know, straighten my leg and standing head to knee, be, you know, because my hamstrings are tight or, or anatomically my arms are T-Rex and my legs are right. long, right? Yeah. It's just the, it's that's, but that's part of the self-acceptance piece that you were talking about in the mirror is like, it's okay. And it's a, it's, that is the point is to stay right with yourself, where you are with your limitations and all your flaws and all your amazingness mm -hmm. and just to know it and not rather than just, Oh, I'm going to set the goal that I'm going to do X and I'm going to make my body do this by a certain time. So I can be happy and reach that further expectations, which is outcome oriented versus process oriented and enjoying the process of knowing yourself and your limitations and your strengths and seeing that the transformation over time that comes when you just continue to practice right and enjoy that practice right yeah absolutely that's why i think there's always I, with many of these things there's a basis in the physical but it goes so much far further beyond that really right, right. And that, that's, again, why I, I really appreciate it. All right, this one's an easy one, maybe. Why the bright lights? <laughs> like, why do the lights have to be on the whole time? Yeah, all I think about is his quote from his book of, like, under the, under the lights, oh, yeah. uh, you'll see. Yeah, I think that's the, the candor and the truth and the, yeah. you know, <laughs> the lights are on and nobody's home. Yeah. <laughs> um, he also says the darkest place in the room is under the lamp <laughs> yeah yeah well right and and so i think it's clarity it's truth it's yeah it's enlightenment it's you know your eyes wide open rather than you know close slam shut yeah yeah i mean that's a big part of it i don't what do you know anything else about why the why the heat i mean the the, the lights uh, you know, I think I think that uh, a lot of it again is just about um, awareness. I think it's so much of it just comes to awareness. Mm -hmm. It is everything that we're doing is is with the mirrors, the heat, the crowded room. A lot of times, it's just awareness. It's like that replicates what real life is like, because in real life, you're not in a, a quiet, isolated room with low lights and flickering candles. In real life, you're at work and there's everyone around you annoying you. <laughs> it's loud and all kinds of different environments, but you have to focus and you have to breathe and you have to do it. So it replicates what your real life is like. Yeah. And I, and I remember reading a great story too about someone who had panic attacks and was recommended to do Bikram yoga and thought, oh my goodness, that, you know, that's never gonna work. But that's actually what really helped heal because being calm in an environment that replicated real life was what this person really needed. Not yeah. separate. Them. Not that you don't want to at times separate yourself from chaos, but the reality is even in your home, it might be chaos, right? You might not have to be work, right? So it's about, as again, it's the balance and that place of safety. You think about a person with panic, a panic disorder or something like that. You, it seems counterintuitive. Oh, let's throw them into the fire of a Bikram class. And with lights in their face, and right, it seems counterintuitive, but that's only because of our relationship again, which you brought up at the beginning to comfort. And really, all this yoga is is exposure therapy. Mm -hmm. And every psychologist on the planet knows that that's how that's how you deal with trauma. That's mm -hmm. how you deal with panic and 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 nervousness, and you look at it a little bit at a time from a place of safety. So the structure of that dialogue, the structure, the discipline of step by step by step, I know what to expect. It's say, you know, and I can go out of my comfort zone at my own pace. And it's my practice, my teachers looking at me in the mirror and face those stressors basically mm -hmm. right a little bit at a time in a controlled environment which is i i'm so glad that everybody has this practice now even though we're not 
practicing the hatha at home with the heat and the mirrors and everything, but we're taking all of that practice and able to utilize it now when it's a very stressful time and yeah. conditions around us are challenging. Um, it, I just, it, it's amazing. Yeah. Now I know we're going to come up to into the end here uh, because of the timing on our Zoom call. So last really quick, <laughs> why, why is the teacher talking continuously for 90 minutes? And we've sort of talked a little bit about this in that this is part of, again, our mind, their body, uh, about keeping them tethered, right, to, 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 to what we're saying, to keeping it safe, because each, each line in the dialogue is important to keeping you present in the moment and not having your mind wander. So for 90 minutes, you're focusing on yourself. But I just, I, I, just in case we get all of a sudden cut off, <laughs> because we are. <laughs> yeah, present moment awareness is the, Emmy Cleave said, Bikram yoga without um, mindfulness is just stretching in a hot room. Mm -hmm. And so that present moment awareness is, that dialogue keeps, you present because you have to focus on what you're doing with your body one command at a time when chin up chin up sweetheart look in the mirror look in the mirror look in the mirror you know and arms over your head it gives you a focal point so that you can the distractions where really it's that deliberate focus and um hanging on to those words gives you the gives you the focus it gives you right. something to do that tether right to to where yeah, yeah 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 it's i think it's yeah it's it's the best it's like a you know it's like a i don't want to say a, a mantra but it, you the mind has to focus and concentrate on something right. um, to keep it to keep it busy for a little bit and here's our last one in terms of we've talked about it's a discipline right loving these photos right? <laughs> it's a discipline and so uh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording here uh, and then we can connect Mo on next steps. But I think as, now as we go through each of the postures, it'll be interesting because we can tie it all back in too. It's in there, right? It's all in the words. It's all what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and it's what really I think makes the students love this yoga, but um, why we're such evangelists for it as well. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, gl I'm glad we talked to kind of about the context and now Yes, when we get back together and we do the step by step, I think I'm glad that we did it this way. You're so smart. Because that, you know, now now you can understand the individual pieces within right. whole. Yeah, what it means. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mo. All right.